Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this thing here. This is the new Runcam split from Runcam. Out at the end of this month, that's June 2017, it's the replacement, it appears, for the Runcam 3. Now the Runcam 3 was that cube action camera that I really, really liked and actually performed beautifully and was a lot of bang for the buck. And I'm guessing something's gone on behind the scenes there because that product has been pulled and we now have this one here. So what the Runcam split is, is is a kind of a deconstructed run cam 3 so not only is it going to allow you to record in high definition locally on the model itself but it's also going to work as an action camera which you could do with the original run cam 3 but this one seems to have been optimized a little bit for that so as you can see, the way it's designed is that you have the camera itself. This is a little HD camera capable of capturing 1080p 60 frames a second. And this ribbon cable goes back to the main board where all of the hard work is actually done. The main board itself only has a handful of connectors, one of which is a standard FPV camera plug. So if you already have a normal run cam camera like an Eagle, an Owl or something like that installed in your model, then you can just unplug plug the cable from the back of that and plug that cable that you pulled out of the old camera into the board, the PCB itself, and you're pretty much good to go. The weight of this thing is about 23 grams, so as well as giving you HD video recording, uh, it also gives you things like super wide dynamic range. I'm a big fan of the wide dynamic range on the Runcam cameras, and we've looked at a few of them. This one has it as well, so I'm hoping that it gives similar levels of performance to what we had with that excellent Runcam 3. The lens itself is removable. And the PCB is designed with 30.5mm mounting holes, so if you've got space above an existing flight controller power distribution stack, you can stick it on the top of there. It's not particularly expensive either, it's only about $70, so it gives you a Runcam 3 for a little bit less money, and there's also an optional Wi-Fi Module 2 that you can stick on the side, you can buy it with or without it. I'll talk about the Wi-Fi module and different ways to configure everything. Uh, the Wi-Fi module is nice, but the way it attaches to the side of the board and is kind of stuck up or stuck down does actually make it a little bit trickier to use when this board is installed on the top of a PCB flight controller stack. So let me very quickly show you what you get in the box. Uh, the box itself is a standard run cam camera size. You open it up and in the top layer you have the PCB board connected to the camera itself. Uh, this is the way it arrives and then you lift up that piece and underneath then you have a couple of bags of bits. You have the Wi-Fi module, if you've ordered it with a Wi-Fi module that you can plug into the side. And under that you have a little bag of cables. Now in that bag of cables you have various fixings and PCB standoffs which is a nice touch and you also have a mount for the camera so you can with a couple of screws mount it directly onto your frame and it also has an adapter because the size of the camera is the new Swift Mini size. So if you have mounts already on your frame for something like a HS 1177 camera or you're replacing something like an Eagle or an Owl 2 or something like that then you know what then uh, if by using this adapter it'll fit perfectly. There's a couple of other cables as well there's a standard kind of USB out cable and there's also a cable here to connect it to your FPV transmitter and there's an extra long cable to connect the camera back to the PCB if you want to change that out. To change that out, you'll probably end up having to take the screws out the back of the HD camera itself, uh, but it does mean that if you have a particularly uh, long quad or the space between where the camera is mounted and the flight controller stack is a bit longer than the, can be supported by the supplied cable, you've got that extra choice too. In terms of connecting it into your model, it's pretty straightforward. As I've already said, the power and everything for the whole system comes from one connector at the back, and that's a standard three-pin connector with the ground plus five volts and the video signal as well. Uh, be very careful about making sure you're plugging it in the right way. It has to be five volts. This doesn't have a wide voltage input range, so you're going to have to make sure that you have a nice, healthy battery illuminator circuit or that your FPV transmitter is supplying five volts at a decent amount of current. This thing will pull about 650 milliamps, so with other pieces on as well, so, and that's a little bit more than a standard camera, so check the specs of your video transmitter or whatever you're going to use to power this thing with 5 volts to make sure that it can easily supply about an amp I think would give you enough headroom so that you don't run into problems. 
Once you've got it connected into a transmitter, I've just plugged it into one of our Immersion RC 25 milliwatt numbers here, and it runs it beautifully. Uh, there are a couple of things. You can obviously see the FPV image on the screen itself. There are two buttons on the side of the module. Uh, the first way you can configure it is using those buttons. One of them is the power on and off. You can configure it to automatically turn on and automatically start recording, but by default, both of those are turned off. Once it's powered on, then you can cycle through the different modes using the two buttons. And you can also start and stop recording by briefly pressing the power button, which is very similar to how the button works on top of the normal run cam action cameras. You can access the menu through the system as well and navigate using those two buttons. And that allows you to change all of the recording features so this has a 1080p 60 frame a second, a 1080p 30 frame a second mode, and 720p 60 frame a second. So in fact, all of the settings in here are very, very reminiscent of the Runcam 3. With the Wi-Fi module installed, then you can also connect to it using the existing Runcam applications on iOS and Android 2. And that will allow you to do all your configuration and bits and pieces. You will notice, however, that while you are doing your FPV bits and bobs, there is no FPV signal shown. The, the view in your goggles is just showing that the Wi-Fi is enabled, gives you the Wi-Fi um, ID and also the Wi-Fi password as well. Bit of a shame that. It does mean that it's an either-or situation when you're using the Wi-Fi which for me is another reason why I'm probably not going to use the Wi-Fi on a daily basis with this little guy. Last way to integrate this, apparently there's uh, work to integrate the control of this system into Betaflight and CleanFlight, so you should be able to do that from the graphical user interface as well, and who knows, if that happens, it might be integrated into the on-screen display in Betaflight and CleanFlight, and that would make it even easier to set up. So attaching to the quad is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to put it onto one of my old trusty quads here. I've designed and 3D printed a mount for this that will replace the mount that currently has a Runcam Eagle in the front. So I'm just going to pull the cable out the back of the Runcam Eagle, stick it in the back of the PCB, mount everything up, and let's take it out and give it a bit of a fly. I'll also record the DVR footage, because one of the things that you might have noticed if you're looking through the specs on the Runcam site is it appears that it records in one aspect ratio and the FPV is in another one. So I'll record the DVR footage from the goggles and I'll also do a 1080p 60 frame a second recording onto the SD card. Uh, oh, let me very quickly show you the SD card. The way the SD card attaches in here is a little unusual. Normally on these things you have kind of the push to click style of S mini SD card holder. On this one it's the lockable style. So what you have to do is pull up the protective sticker that's on the module and then you have to pop the SD card in and then trying to keep that in position, close the gate and then lock it as well. Now the fact that you have to lift the gate to get the SD card out does mean that you're going to have to think about how you mount this, potentially having the SD card pointing up and also on your model if you want to remove the SD card to get it your recordings then you're going to have to really think about that. Um, a bit of an odd choice, I'm guessing it's there to make sure that the SD card is ejected in the event of a crash but it does mean you're going to have to think a little bit more about how you mount this little guy inside your plane or multi-rotor. So now we've talked about that, let me go and have a fly and let's come back and have a look at the footage. So the footage we're about to use is from quite an interesting day. It's a very bright, very breezy day. I've put the Runcam split on this little model in front of us and I've also stuck one of the Runcam 3s, the discontinued Runcam 3s, on the top as well. So we have that basis for comparison. So I've actually got three lots of footage that I'll try and sync up here. One from the DVR and the goggles, one from the Runcam split and one from the discontinued Runcam 3 for comparison. So first of all, let me just show you the footage as it comes out. Uh, this is done at 60 frames a second. I haven't rendered it at that because the rest of the video isn't. But hopefully this will give you a nice idea in 1080p. Even with YouTube compression, you'll be able to see what it looks like. In the lower right-hand corner, we have the DVR running at the same time. You can tell it's the DVR because in the top right-hand corner of that inserted frame, we have the little red dot flashing, which tells me that the run cam split is doing a recording. And... It looks fantastic. In fact, what you can't really tell from this, the DVRs um, don't seem to do it justice, but how pretty 
the image is. It's very bright, it's very saturated, it looks fantastic. And I've actually had a ton of fun flying with this, even though it was blowing a gale, even though I was kind of fighting with the quadcopter to keep it level and to combat the wind to try and get some decent footage. It just looked amazing. Now the challenge with the weather today is that we've got a really bright sky, sometimes the ground is in direct sunlight, sometimes the clouds are covering the sun and we've got that slightly tricky situation where we have a very bright sky but a darker ground and those cameras that don't have the wide dynamic range and again this camera does have the super duper wide dynamic range on most of the run cam cameras that I've tried and you can tell that because even when the sun's going in and out the clouds it still looks fantastic and we're not losing any detail in the ground. Worthwhile showing the difference between uh, the recorded image at 1080p 60 frames a second and also the DVR footage. So if I scale up the DVR footage and try and overlay one on top of the other you can see that we're losing a little bit of either side. Uh, but hopefully, and apologies this has been really tricky to try and get these two frames identical on top of each other, I've made the one on the top from the DVR semi-transparent and it's a looks like a bit of a special effect from a 1980s pop video but hopefully you can get an idea of the little bits that you lose when you're viewing the FPV footage. Final test is let's put all three of these ones on together so here in the left hand side we have the Runcam splits video the Runcam splits video is 1080p 60 frames a second the Runcam 3 is on the right hand side uh, the slightly different angles here because I have the flight camera the Runcam splits camera pointed up a little bit more than the Runcam 3 and at the bottom we've got that DVR footage as well you can see the Runcam 3 is a little bit brighter uh, but actually all of them look really really nice just a quick insert here on the actual size and specs of this image that I've got from the Runcam split. Uh, so just give you an idea of the kind of space it's taking up on the SD card. Now the really handy thing was that when you plug a USB cable into the side of the Runcam split, appears as a drive on your computer if you've got the USB set as PC connection in the menu and then you can just pull the images from the onboard SD card and I was very pleased that that did that because I didn't really want to have to try and take it all the way out to try and get that SD card out of it. it does kind of mean though that once that SD card is in there and it's in your model it's kind of in there for good. So let me finish off with a quick summary of what I think of this thing. So I really like the different way that Runcam have come up with a way of capturing HD 1080p 60 frame a second video in your craft. Because of whatever's gone on with the Runcam 3, it looks like Runcam have been forced to do something really innovative and I'm really pleased they have because it's another way to add a camera onto your model and both record and watch FPV footage at the same time. Since I've put this little camera in this quadcopter, I've actually taken off the action camera that was on the top that I was using to record because it's completely superfluous. So now I'm considering this for those situations where I haven't got room for an action camera and there are a couple of models that aren't designed to fit either a Runcam 2 or a GoPro or one of the other cube style action cameras that are out there. I like the file protection stuff, if you check the manual it does talk about the fact that there's file protection there so if you do lose power to it it will safely close the file so you don't lose that recording. Again a nice feature particularly as now there's no onboard battery as such. Pin compatible with the Fat Shark style FPV video transmitters it was a piece of cake to install it here. So if you already have a camera in your model that uses that same three pin connector, and pretty much all of the Fat Shark models do, most of the Runcam ones do as well, and I've got lots of others that use that same pin connector, you can swap it out in about five minutes. The idea of the Wi-Fi module is nice. I like the way you can connect to the application. Not a big fan of the way that when the application is turned on, the FPV image disappears and just shows you the Wi-Fi information, but it does allow you to configure things at the field and use it in a slightly different way. And even if you don't have the Wi-Fi pieces, you can get access to the pieces that you might want to change through that on-screen display menu system that's there as part of the setup. Once you've got the hang of navigating with those two buttons, it's pretty straightforward. So the way to think of this really is it's a Runcam 3 split into its separate discrete parts. Now I'm very pleased about that, it means that I can still use the kind of Runcam 3-ness of it to do things that I want to do with the models that I have here. 
Things that are worth a mention though, first of all is I'm not a fan of the SD card holder. The way that it locks the SD card in is probably great, so it's not going to be ejected in the event of a crash, but it does mean that then once it's in there, it's kind of in there for life, and you're going to have to use the USB port at the side for PC connection in the menus and download your images and files from that. In reality, I think the Wi-Fi board is not going to be very useful for a number of builds where it's going to get in the way of the stack that it's supposed to either sit on top of or dangle along the side of. It is one of those things that's probably useful to kind of push in when you need it and then try and pull it out when you don't because also it doesn't lock in place. It would have been nice to have that Wi-Fi circuitry actually as part of the board itself rather than something stuck out on the side. Be aware again that the camera isn't that HS117 standard size enclosure. I'll put my support that I'm used on here for the video on Thingiverse if you want to go and have a look at that. Uh, but do be aware of that. There is the adapter, but you're going to have to pop the adapter on. And once you've got that adapter on, it will fit into stuff. I'm a bit sad that you can't plug other cameras into this. Now, I know the whole point of this is that it's a 1080p recording system and it gives you the ability to capture HD on the craft and use one camera not only to do all that, but also as an FPV camera as well. But I would have loved to be able to plug other cameras in here, maybe the Eagle or the Owl, the Owl 2, um, other Runcan cameras as well with that standard kind of connection, be able to record locally on the model and also use them as FPV too. Hopefully Runcan will continue with this kind of idea and create a standalone board that will allow you to record locally on the craft if you're flying FPV and then you don't have to worry about all that fuzziness and interference that you get appearing on your footage. Be careful with the power input. A lot of run cam cameras are really wide voltages these days. You can pretty much plug them into anything and the power of them work great. This absolutely isn't. It only runs on 5 volts, so double check not only that you've got a 5 volt supply that's nice and steady in your craft, but also that it can easily handle the 650 milliamps that this thing takes to run. So hopefully that helps those of you that have been looking at this on the Runcam website and wondering whether or not it's for you. I think for those cases where you can fit the board and the camera inside a model and you also don't have the space for a separate action camera as well, this is a great option. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.